Hello, thank you for joining a second time. I got Target 2 from CSSBattle.dev up and ready. I want to show you three techniques. That's three. First one's a bunch of P elements, not a bunch of PP elements, just a bunch of paragraph elements. Second one is going to be linear gradient and stacking them so that we can create sort of a cross. Third one's going to be reflect. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first one, we're going to have a bunch of P elements. And those P elements are going to have margin to them. And they're going to just create their own grid uh, as soon as they're inline flex. So it'll kind of, of course, I have my four P elements. And each one's going to have its own margin. The crazy part about this is you don't need to set the margin to be different for each of the individual boxes. If you use your parent container and you stretch out the margin, you can sort of get the same effect. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stretch out the x-axis of the body element in order to pull up those p elements so that they're all on the same line. So onto the actual code. What does it look like? So I already set up the P elements, just because I don't want you to watch me typing a bunch of PPs. Anyway, we're going to use the body as the parent. And I got this Ron Burgundy color that I'm going to use. So let's get this Ron Burgundy color. Awesome. I'm not going to put on the margin at first, because I want you guys to see what it looks like when those P elements sort of stack together uh, in a single column. All right. I'm going to put the height of 50 pixels, width of 50 pixels for each P element. I'm going to set that background to that sad McDonald's color. It's kind of faded. It makes me so sad. We're going to set each one to display inline flex. And then each one is going to have a margin. So for my X and Y axis, I need to think how much I should give. So for margin, you can have a shorthand, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, the first value represents the y-axis. So you're up and you're down. You put the margin up there, you put the margin down there. Your second value represents the oh, x-axis. So you're left, you're right, you squeeze it out like that. Perfect. So if you weren't using shorthand, it would be top right, bottom left. Awesome. So now that we have that, uh, it looks like they're stacked. So we need to stretch out that body in order to give the container enough space for the remaining margin. It's already pretty close. It looks like my y-axis is a little bit off. So if I try 50, oh, it's Perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this up a little bit. Some of the tricks that they give on this website are deleting the unit values, as long as they're pixel. Deleting the last semicolon within your selector. And then deleting the last curly bracket within your style declaration. So now we got it all good and squared away. I'm going to submit that. Hmm. Diggity diggity. Whoa, whoa. All right, so on to technique two, which was linear gradient. Uh, we want to stack, make sort of like a cross with our body element. So let me show you how that's gonna how that's gonna go down, you know. All right, 
so we got this uh, this whole canvas here this whole canvas here represents HTML we're gonna put some padding on that so that the body is now represented by this rectangle here and we're gonna put a fill on it so this fill is gonna be our McDonald's color so just think of it like that and when we use linear gradients we can specify the direction so the linear gradients there's going to be two of them stacked on top of each other as well as this background color so it'll be two right we'll specify when the transparent transparent color starts when it stops and then when this sort of overlay occurs so what we'll see is when i use two right I'll specify a stop right when this square ends. So it's gonna stop there, but then this whole entire rest of the stop that I'm gonna define leads up to the next square here. So now that we have this side filled out, okay, we don't quite yet have our squares. In order to do that, we would need to specify a two bottom gradient. So when we specify our two, body, two bottom gradient, it's going to like go boom all the way over here. That's where the stop's going to go. You see how those squares are starting to fill up? And then it's going it's to go crazy all over this area here. And then we're going to stop it right there. Cut off. So guess what? Now we created the pattern. Cool. We got our squares here. And that should get us to the get us to submit. Okay. So, let's start with the goodies. How do we get that in code? So, go back to our scene. We got to delete all this stuff. Oh my. We'll start with the HTML Gotta put that wrong burgundy color. I got that wrong burgundy color in there. So now that we have that, I'm gonna start styling the body. And the body, I want the squares to be this depressed McDonald color. And body by default has a margin. Uh, that's just part of default browser styles. So we're gonna leverage that, not reset it. We're gonna leverage it and put in some padding. So I'd say about 40. Would that get us where we need to? Ooh, it's a little bit off. 42. Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay. So now we have our canvas set up. Uh, I want to put the linear gradients on it. So the linear gradient syntax, it starts out with linear gra dash gradient. And if you have multiple backgrounds, it's separated by a comma, I believe. Or maybe if that's more than one. Anyway, uh, to right, this is going to be our middle gradient. So to start, our squares are going to be 50 pixels. So we want the gradient to gloss over that. In order to do that, we have to set up our stops appropriately. And I actually want the wrong bug and do So. Perfect. So now the gradient is glossing over this left-hand side because we've set our stop to start at 50 pixels from the left of the background. Now we want the color to expand all the way to the other side. So how do you do that? Well, technically we know the value, but if this were a production environment, I would want to use calc. So we would still want to specify our hex value and we want to go all the way to the end of the gradient but then subtract 50 pixels for that other side and then we want to start the transparent stop because now it's sort of that color is still going on beyond 100 it's just, it's a plot it's implied uh, so what we can do is specify another stop and we use the same stop that we used before and I'm sure it would probably be 200 pixels if it, we got rid of that calc thing. 
So now we got that our first step. We've we've got that middle cross figured out. So now we got to do the bottom, and it's pretty much the same thing. It's pretty pretty much how I say, how how you say, pretty much. But it's the same thing, but two bottom. And since the gradient's the same, 50 pixels from the top, and then cover all that stuff. 50 pixels from the bottom, then just go nuts. And you're good. So I think we're good. I got my margins right, or my, at least my padding on my HTML. Got my colors right. I think we're good. So I'm gonna submit this. Let's submit it. Oh wait, let's clean it up first. Oh! Can we delete pixel values here? Nope, nope, nope. This is the pasta said no. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. On to the next one. So I said that third technique was reflect, right? That's crazy. It's pretty crazy. Let me show you. <laughs> Alright. Third technique. Going to do reflect. This is reflect. Okay. So how do we do that? First we have to set up the left hand side. The left hand side is going to reflect onto the right hand side. So we'll set up the left hand container to be maybe 20% width of our body element. So our body element is going to be this big thing right here. Now when you reflect and originally it's going to reflect right here. So that doesn't get us what we want. We want to somehow create a space, create a space right that leads right up to the center and that reflects from that center in order to get the same, uh, same squares up on the right hand side. So for this case, I'm going to use border and that border is going to be the color of the raw burgundy color. And to get the box shapes going on, uh, I'm gonna use box shadow, inset. I mean, we could still apply that linear gradient, but I'm gonna use box shadow. And so that box shadow will be inset from the top, inset from the bottom. And that would be our depressed McDonald's color. Boom, all right, so let's jump into it. What's it gonna look like in depth? So, I think I do want to leverage body again. And I want the same padding to apply, but I want body to be a different width. So I'm going to specify 20 pixels, 20%. And then let's create the box shadow. So, for my first video, I'll go over real quick. Box shadow, you can have an inset, nothing set. Inset is within the container. Within, this is within. Boop, 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 boop. Not specifying, it's without. It's on the outside. So we're gonna do an inset, and then you have your X value, your Y value. Oh, it's already starting to show up there. And your blur, your spread, and your color. So our color is gonna be the depressed McDonald's. Oh. Perfect. So it seems like this is a little bit too wide, but I'm gonna let it go for now, um, just to see how it turns out. And the cool part about Reflect is it's really easy to do, but maybe I'll surprise you guys with that later. Uh, okay. In order to do multiple box shadows, they're just comma delineated. So inset, I wanna get that same little ditty up on, up on the top. I'm gonna put that ditty up there. Oh yeah! All right. So we got our box shadow set up. We don't have to do this more than once because it's gonna reflect. But when I reflect, I'll show you guys what it does. Oh gosh! It's a reflect box. Box reflect. Oh boy! Don't judge me. Oh! It shows right up next to it. 
So we need that space. But how do we make that space? We'll do it with the border. So border right for now, let's just say, oh boy, we'll try 100. And then the color, we could actually do transparent. Ooh, it's getting there. Uh, da, da, da. I would say 90 might be pretty good. All right. Oh, that drives me nuts. I'm gonna try a little bit more refined width. Um, don't know why I did percentage, but I'm gonna try that. Getting a little bit closer. Uh, I believe from our last calculation, it'd be 100 from the uh, first example, which it's right. I think we're all good. It's pretty easy, right? Wasn't too bad. So I went ahead and deleted all the goodies on the jewel sleeve, uh, just so that I could clean up my character count. Uh, but that was the third technique using WebKit Box Reflect. You can specify direction, top, right, bottom, left. Um, you can also add in like some gradients to it too, if you wanted to sort of have this mirror-like, uh, faded reflection going on but this is what i got uh, i know you guys have some crazy solutions so let me know what you're cooking up in your dungeon uh, i'd love to know if you got any questions let me know hope you have an awesome day enjoy it play ya.